Ty Herndon, how are you? Facebook Live, twice in one day. Hey. How you guys doing out there? How about that? Um, I'm excited. You're supposed to be on this side of the camera and sitting with me. For I know, this, but so. you know, I'm trying to operate everything. Okay, and, so know. Bev's on the other side. From I'm over Facebook here. Live, folks. I'm back here, folks. So she's doing the total <laughs> Oprah thing. She's behind the scenes. I am. Today, I'm having a cup of coffee. Um, just left the. Uh, uh, what we have in Nashville this year, the IEBA, IEBA, uh -huh. IEBA which is International Entertainment yeah. Buyers Association. That's right. So we've been kissing some babies over there to bring shows to you guys. So, um, so that's what I've been doing today, and had some great interviews this morning, and been looking forward to this one with my good friend Beth. Yeah, we're it's we're, so we're good friends. Fun. So. I know. This has been so you guys just tune in. We're also filming over here, so. Just tune in, and, and uh, um, we're going to talk. We're going to talk about whatever Bev wants to talk about today. Yeah, we're going to talk about whatever Ty wants to talk about. Okay. We're going to talk about I'll a talk a, lot. Got a new album out, which is rocking. This thing is, I want to say, one of your best. Thank I you. I love it. I really do. Thank you. And you know, I listen to a lot of music. I know so. you do, and I know you've got a lot of my past albums as well. So I do. Well, we're super excited because this Friday pre-orders start yes. uh, for iTunes and Amazon. And some of the fans out there might know already that Amazon uh, went up a day or two early. So uh, you can actually go to Amazon and, and pre-order the album. But the uh, Friday is the official pre-order day. It's exciting. Um, it's very exciting. I've um, been talking about it a lot this week. Yeah. So. Well, let's kind of start at the beginning. I know a good friend of ours, Eric Halberg, had a lot to do with it. And you guys produced this together. We and wrote a lot of songs on the album together. Every, mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it's it's great. So let's Thank talk you. about, okay, Ty decides we want to do a new album. Walk me through your process. Everybody's <laughs> is different. I want to know so how you do it. the process of... Um, of starting this album started 19 months ago. Okay. Um, we did a really cool song festival in Panama City, Florida, well, close to Panama City, called the 30A, which is an area uh, close to Panama City, the 30A Song Festival. I think this is their fifth year, and we'll be doing that again in, uh, in January. Um, but I was in the process of just starting to think about a new album, and that's always very stressful for me because I just want to something to be important in the music and also want to have a lot of fun with it and I had the task of thinking about how am I gonna let this album compete with today exactly. with what's, what I'm hearing on the radio and, and the lyrics that I'm hearing yet remain true to who I am musically um, so we Eric Halbig and Drew Davis hi guys mm -hmm. um, we uh, we just took a road trip we went down and spent four days in um, in the 30A area, and the first song we wrote was on the 28th floor of my friend Mary Frances Rudy's um, beach house, is where we were staying. And it was a beautiful day, and I was like, you know, out of all my albums, I've really never had kind of a fun summer beach type song. And so we came up with the idea of All Night Tonight, and so All Night Tonight uh, is sitting at number, I think, number six on the album, uh, somewhere in there. Um, it's the first song we wrote, and it started the blueprint um, for the writing process. Over the next four months, we really would shed every day, and we had um, written six things, six songs that we really felt great about. And then, you know, a lot of times you write a lot of songs, and you go, "Okay, that's not working." Right. And then I got really busy. I started doing more shows. I was out on the road, um, doing a lot of events. And we, get, we really got stalled. We got stalled for about four months. And I was like, oh man, we're off to such a great start. Um, and I'm not a selfish writer. I, I'm a writer on six songs on this new album, but Eric and Drew were such amazing writers. So um, I started diving into their catalog and we started tailor making some songs uh, that fit me and fit the album. So I guess the biggest difference for me on this new album, which you guys will soon hear, uh, we really experimented with a lot of new sounds, um, a lot of um, new drum sounds, guitar sounds, electronic sounds, um, a lot of cool melodies in the writing process. Um, and I will be honest with you, they they kind of drug me into uh, the studio kicking and screaming because I'm really sad in my ways about things. And so <laughs> it's been a learning process for me and I really have become a better producer and a better songwriter through this process. And 
Um, I'm, to be honest with you, uh, we're so excited about the new music coming out, but we are already talking about the next album. Already planning ahead because sometimes it can Absolutely. all of a sudden it'll be 18 months again. Yeah, yeah. And well, you're on a roll. You know, it's, it's in your blood. It's right <laughs> yes. now. It's kind of all in there. So, do you find that you're more inspired to write now because you've been so involved with it versus if you've been on the road just promoting and singing and doing things from past songs, past uh, albums? Yes. So now yes. you're kind of in the groove. It's I'm in the groove, and I'm also a, a songwriter that really writes from the now mm -hmm. with the experiences and I'm having a lot of new experiences and, and meeting a lot of new people and um, getting to sing at a lot of awesome places and hearing people's stories um, how they relate to my story and, and just just sometimes somebody just needs a hug Absolutely. you know just to have sure. a, having a tough day so the music is a healer mm -hmm. and so it's awesome to do the shows and then talk to folks afterwards um, to know that the new songs, the old songs, um, has made someone's day better. And the most important thing to me is someone to hear my music and go, gosh, that happened to me. Or that happened to my mom, dad, someone I love. Mm -hmm. Really putting your life into the music, something that came from me. Mm -hmm. And that's really an honor when right. that happens. And I know a lot makes of me excited. fans and people, when they hear the music, they assume that the artist when you're singing the song, mm -hmm. it's personal to you. Exactly. Do you choose songs that you feel are more personal to you, or mm -hmm. do you just sing it because it feels right? What What do you What makes you grab a song and say, "I'm going to record that one"? In order for me to grab a song and to know that I'm going to take it in the studio, I have had to personally lived those lyrics in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so this record being so personal, I mean, it does. It is a story. It tells a, 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 a beautiful story um, of my life, and you will find out with these other songwriters. And there's only six, seven, seven other writers on this album, and um, a lot of their life experience is also poured into this. But I related to it Absolutely. so heavily right. um, that I wanted to record the song. Right. Well, and because it some, touched someone that you knew or that exactly. they had an experience in. So and some of them, I even we even took it a step further and rewrote some things um, that would tailor make the song for this record. So we did some of that as well. Mm -hmm. um, and Eric and Drew are brilliant writers, but they also brought in a, uh, a few brilliant people with amazing stories. Mm -hmm. So right. Um, so the point of my story is that I didn't write everything on this record, but um, I'm really glad I wasn't a control freak about <laughs> that and allowed the process to happen with other stories that matched what we were trying to do with this record. Absolutely. And House on Fire was born. Um, this um, It's a very intense title um, for an album that takes you on a very fun and intense, soulful, spiritual, uh, and healing journey. So compare this project to some of your past projects. How has it been different? Um, I've had much, much um, how do I put this? Um, I stepped back, I let go of the reins a little bit, but I was also so much more involved mm -hmm. in the songs. In, in different the, ways? In, the, in different ways. Okay. Okay. In the writing, in the production, in the producing. Uh, in the mixing, um, just all of it has my blueprint on it. So in the past, I've relinquished control a lot of times to producers and just, just gone in and sang the songs. And uh, I did not do that with Journey On, the Journey On album, because I pretty much, I was a writer on every song on that record. Um, and that was so amazing to, to be able to tell my story through my faith mm -hmm. and uh, get a lot of accolades for that album. I did not do that for Lies I Told Myself, which was the next album. I wrote some things on that album, but that was such a pivotal moment in my life right. to tell some amazing stories. Sure. Um, and then the transition from that into, uh, into House on Fire yeah. uh, was incredible. It was I always find it fun. interesting when you know I speak to new artists and then I speak to an established artist, and just to watch that growth progress on what you let go of and what you start doing yourself and yes and your comfort level because everybody's is different yes and you have your own ideas and you know everybody's mm -hmm. expanding and wanting to learn and as they grow things change so they do and for me musically um, 
just singing some new melodies and and pulling some some uh, some ideas into the music that made it such a cool river of melodies and, mm -hmm. and I, I mean I had a ball what I'm trying to say is I had a blast singing this record mm -hmm. it was really fun and this is one of the first albums that I'm already doing six or seven songs out on the road um, that they, they mix so well with the Perfect. with the past hits and they just it's a little bit different sound but it's still me because um, Reba McIntyre told me a long time ago you're gonna be in a place where you have to reinvent yourself and I didn't really know what that meant mm -hmm. but I learned a lesson in this reinvention you can reinvent but don't lose yourself and that the fans have a certain idea of what they want to hear from you and they they've invested in you musically for this long true. so just make sure that that you recognize you Absolutely. and the music okay so that being said brings up an interesting thought to me as you're meeting fans afterwards and your meet and greets and, and so forth and in Facebook social media I mean anymore meet and greet doesn't necessarily mean it they can talk to you on social media now so right. How much do you hear from them that oh, they just want to hear the old stuff or are they you know, super excited about the new? Tell me it's, some of the stories that you're kind of hearing on, on you know, what they're feeling and, and what they like. I've never had so many positive comments on new material Good. That I, as I have on this record. People are really, I think they're ready for some new music. Mm -hmm. um, so they're really intently listening and we released a few sneak peeks. Um, a few weeks ago, and, and then we pulled them. So everybody's like, "What? Wait, what happened to the sneak peeks?" And um, those will reappear. Just so you guys know, they'll reappear uh, in the coming weeks. Because um, we did five full-length videos for this album, I've never done that before. So there's a, wow. a real connection with the the artist and the music that was important to me. But I think. When people come to the shows, they love the hits, they love to sing along, but I'm getting a lot of really positive feedback Good. from the fans going, man, that's a really cool song. Good. really like that. I can't wait to crank it up in my car. Good. We just had one of our New York gals ask us, uh, if you're coming on tour, I'm assuming she wants to know in her area, but she's <laughs> from the New York area, Brooklyn. Yeah. You, and I know that you're coming that area because I just overheard a conversation about you going to New York. So. I am. I'm actually going to New York um, to visit some of the cool places uh, like, like Facebook, Twitter, the actual home offices and do some acoustic sets. Um, but we are absolutely uh, looking um, at two venues in, in New York. Uh, one being, of course, the City Winery, which we played many times. Mm -hmm. So there'll be an announcement about a New York show soon. And we are touring. We'll be touring all next year right. with this record. And so um, I'm hoping at the end of the year we've gotten to see most of you out there. Some place or another. So we know our Facebook Live is working because we've had one person ask a question. So yes, awesome. you're, you're, we're connected. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I want to go back to the production side again and talk about when you go into the studio, mm -hmm. do you prefer to lay down a lot of things in one day or do you kind of focus on that song? What What is your method to your madness when you go into the studio? Because I know that you have to come into town to do it. This isn't something where you can just run down the street because right. you live here. Well, thank goodness I have a great team of people. You know, by the time I, I get here for tracking day, we really have mapped out what the song's going to be, the musicians, what I want it to sound like. Um, by the time, and of course it always changes. On tracking day, it's what we, uh, when we go in and record all the music, mm -hmm. it, it always takes on its own direction. You know, with the personalities of the musicians that we had that day, or one of the keyboard players might say, I really like this, let's try this, and I'll love it. Sometimes I'll be very honest and say I don't mm -hmm. if I don't like it. And by the end of it, we've tracked, we try to get three songs in one day. And we get the whole album tracked, usually before I start singing it. Because by the time I get into the, that's that part of my psyche where I've got to go perform these songs in the mm -hmm. studio, I really love getting on a roll with it. Yeah. So I'll work up to six to eight weeks just doing the vocals. Yeah. And then we have the fun part of calling in friends to do background vocals wow. and sing on the records and stuff. And then the tedious work starts, the mixing. Mm -hmm. um, that's really where it all comes together. It's where all the ingredients, um, you put them in the oven. And um, it all comes together. And hopefully your cake doesn't fall. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great way of putting it. So are you one that the melody usually comes first? Do the lyrics come first? Or is it just kind of a hodgepodge? Different songs come to you different ways? Yeah, the idea comes first, usually. And I'm always on this thing. When I hear it in conversation, I'm like, oh, that'd be a, a great song idea. But I'm real careful to say that, too, because 
these songwriters are sneaky. All of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute, I had that idea. So, See, it's written right here. Yeah, right, right away. <laughs> What's up with you? So the idea comes first. And usually with the idea, it comes to the idea, is it tempo or ballad or mid-tempo? Um, you kind of always, I just always feel it. And, um, and I'll sit down at the piano, um, or Eric and I will sit down at the guitar. And, we find the groove and then the melody just starts coming and building and today the melodies are so intricate on songs that mm -hmm. getting to do fun stuff like going where you completely would not go normally with this melody and then you find that chord progression you're like wow, that's amazing and it becomes different so this it's just a never-ending process and then when the record's said and done over the years I'm always changing the melodies you know I'm always I'm still doing that just sure. to keep it fresh and fun. Sure, sure. So talk about, have you ever had a song that you thought was going in one direction, whether it be on this project <laughs> or past one, totally, that yeah. cake dropped and it went a whole different direction? Yes, absolutely. Um, sometimes when it takes the wrong direction, it just ends up walking itself right out the door. Right. Um, and we come back to it maybe another time um, because you get stuck on something and you just can't get your way out of it, find your way out of it. Um, and usually in the process of that song leaving, something else comes from it. That's happened so many times. Mm -hmm. um, but It wasn't its time, it wasn't right. Yeah, just... yeah, several songs on this album. House on Fire happened that way. Um, took just It took such an emotional turn on me right in the middle of that song that it, it wore us out. Four days we worked on that song. And it wasn't because we couldn't get the lyrics, it was because it was exhausting to put such honest content into a song mm -hmm. and then think, oh my gosh, have I gone too far? Right. And then you start whittling it back and then it loses everything that you wanted it to have and you end up right back, no, I'm going to this say this. Is this is what I need to say. And this, and then the process of singing something like that is exhausting. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, House on Fire is sitting right in the middle of the album. It is. Um, it is the musical blueprint for this record and um, I can't tell you how many times I had to just kind of walk out of the studio because it's so connected to me and my story right and um, and I love that you know if it, uh, if it I think I would worry if it didn't make me a little upset and, and cry or are angry. Sure, sure. Songs and are meant to bring out emotion. They are. To people, so. And when you hear the vocal on that song, you hear all that. Mm -hmm. You hear all of that. Yeah. In that, in that performance, and uh, you know, there's some moments in it that I might have said I could probably sing that better, but there was so much of what I was feeling in that moment that I left it. Mm -hmm. So. Keeps it real, though. Yeah. It keeps it, you keeps know, it honest well. to your to your fans and the listeners. And, and yeah, the, yeah, absolutely. And the, the, the other the other song that did that to me was Fighter. Mm -hmm. It's the very last song. We did a video for that. You guys will see. Um, you'll see some of the. Uh, uh, oh, let's keep this real. This is my mom. Let's say hi. All right. <laughs> hey, mom. I'm still right in the middle of an interview, but. Uh, Hi, Mom, we're, you're we're on camera. Facebook Live, so I just said, oh, hold on a second, I gotta talk to Mom. So, Mom's taking me to the airport okay. today, so <laughs> I'll call you in about 15 minutes, okay? Nah, you don't need to do that. We'll, we'll, be, we'll be done talking to all our friends here just a little bit. All right, I love you. Okay, bye. I love it. The side that normally people would never see because I would cut that out. So now <laughs> they know this is what happens in an interview. We never know what's going to happen. Absolutely. You never ignore your mother. <laughs> They'll know. <so. laughs> they all know. Well, talk about a little bit about um, your, your tour schedule. And are you going out on radio right now and promoting and getting ready to, to do a lot of that with this? We are. We're releasing a radio single. It's a song called That Kind of Night. It's the first song on the album. And it is a super cool, tempo, fun song. You want to get in your car, let the windows down, and especially in the fall right now, just drive. Don't get a speeding ticket, though. <laughs> um, uh, but we are releasing the album, doing a lot of media around it, uh, a lot of social media, and we um, will actually be doing the radio push in January, uh, February of the new year. So just letting people get really good and familiar with, uh, with the music.
pick. They said we were going to do five videos, and it was hard to pick. I tried to pick songs that meant something different in the album, so we ended up doing uh, the, that kind of night, uh, Blame It on the Mustang, um, House on Fire, and and Fighter, and Sweet Sweet Way to Go. So it's interesting that you've already done the, the videos for these. Yes. A lot of times we'll hear, you know, that this video is getting made as this song is getting ready to be pushed to radio, yeah. and then this video, or yeah. the song will come out first, and then the video six months later to yeah. get more interest in the song after the fact. So right. kind of interesting that you went ahead and just put them in the can and were ready to go with them. Absolutely, because, I mean, with Spotify and YouTube and all of the social media, fans have so much access to the music, yep. and I think it's really important for them to connect with me on, on these songs, and so... Uh, four of three of them are just strictly performance pieces where I'm just I'm looking at you and this is what this lyrics about um, and I loved that and then um, Mustang and Fighter are full on you know the hills are alive that's right. that's <laughs> yeah right. that's, that's very true. change your hearts and minds so when you're talking about venues do you prefer a venue that's small and intimate because I know you're very mm -hmm. personal and very close with your fans yeah. or do you like the huge you know put you out on CMA Fest Stadium put you out <laughs> I like them both yeah they each like have a different both. you get a different feeling a different rush with both of them I'm assuming yeah if we're in a just, you know a venue that has 500 people it becomes like the Bluebird Cafe in Nashville mm -hmm. right we're gonna get you're gonna get a lot more storytelling about the songs the bigger the venue the more uh, lights camera action the, the, the bigger the production gets sure. Sure. and I'm just real careful that the production doesn't overpower the artist right so um, but I love doing the big shows as well but uh, my my favorite are the intimate because I get to talk about the music and you've right. got a very captive audience mm -hmm. to really want to know yeah so talking about your captive audience whether it be a Facebook Live or a great meet, any kind of a thing, social media. Yeah. What's one of the strangest questions you have ever gotten? <laughs> There's been a lot of those. <laughs> a lot of strange questions. Um, my gosh. Um, and, and you know, just right at the top of my mind, uh, people love me doing duets. Mm -hmm. So um, I got a, a question the other day: Would you would you ever do a, a duet with Joan Jett? Oh wow! <laughs> I'm like. I love Joan Jett, yeah. sure, why not? So I get a lot of musical questions um, that would be odd pairings. Uh, the other stuff is just, you know, about dogs, relationships, and, right. you know, right. kids. Right, and just, the common stuff. Yeah. 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 Anything that you've ever just had to, like, will, step back and just literally crack up laughing. You can always tell when I get the awkward look <laughs> on my face, like, because at the end of the day, I can be, I was a shy kid, you know, but a the showbiz was the guy I could step into, and but sometimes I get just a tiny bit of social anxiety, and and you can you can make me blush sure. relatively easy if you ask me the right question. And uh, um, yeah, my friends love to do that to me. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, well, I want to step away from the music just for one second because um, I had the honor of working with you at the MDA event the other night, yeah. and I know that that is something that you know it touches your heart very much in a big way. Um, Talk about the charity and of being a celebrity and being in the mm -hmm. limelight. What do you feel, what are your responsibilities to that? Talk about that a little bit. Well, the minute you walk into a situation with, especially if there's kids involved, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're transformed. I mean, you're, it means so much Absolutely to yes. these kids, these young adults, uh, that you're willing to, to spend an evening with them, kind of be their buddy. Mm -hmm. So you know, I love that. And they talk about it forever. Yeah, you yeah. Know, and we and we just end up sitting there talking about. We talked about baseball yeah, for an hour. Yeah, I bet you did the other day. Yep. Just, um, and just the kids want to just really get to know you, and and they actually um, you they kind of you kind of have them to yourself, and they kind of get a little bit of time away from their parents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, mom, hey, dad. <laughs> oh, we were hanging out. So it's. Pretty fantastic. Um, you know, MDA is close to my heart. Mm -hmm. I love the kids. And then, you know, marrying the, um, um, the ALS uh, Foundation uh, together, and you know, right. that's very close to my heart. Absolutely. And just being able to be such a, a voice and support. I mean, the journey on video that was pointed out the other night at the event, the fact that that means so much to people still. Um, because that was an imprint yep. for ALS with Kevin Turner, Absolutely. and there's a legacy in that, 
and I'm, I'm really happy that it means so much to, to so many people. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And they talk about it. I mean, they're still talking about it. They're talking about next year already. They can't wait. I mean, <laughs> they look forward to it building up. Yes. And, I mean, it creates a lot of memories for these people. So, um, for everybody, I mean, for fans of all Kinds, ages, these kids are so talented. Oh like the art gosh. that they did. You know, I think we I need. Know. I think we need to do a talent show. I think we did too. Next I year. One of them. I, 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 yes. I, let's I just. Mean, it's if awesome. they want to draw, draw. If you want to sing, sing. Do you know. Whatever. Do whatever. Yes. Do whatever. One of the kids can break dance in his wheelchair. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, dude. That's get better it. than I can break dance. So hey. <laughs> Well, let's go back to the album a little bit. What else, is there anything else that we haven't touched on? I know we kind of bounced around a little bit, but yeah. anything else that you really want to talk about or to get out to the fans that, you know... It's an, it's The one thing I want the fans to know, this is an album for everybody because um, I've got a lot of fans in a lot of different walks of life. And I was really careful to keep this album as gender-free as possible. So when you hear this record, you can totally hear my story in it, but you can put your own life into it, your own love, your own relationships, your own heartbreak, your own healing, uh, your own spirituality. And that was really important to me. And I was worried I wouldn't get to do that, but uh, with Eric and uh, Drew's help, we were able to pull that together and it just turned out better than I could have ever imagined. It's just, uh, it's, a, it's, it's awesome to hear people who talk about the album we've heard it I like that's that's pretty cool when, it, when when someone tells you that it touched them in a certain way and you know that that was kind of your business plan your blueprint for that <laughs> album yeah because you do you go into it with a plan of how you kind of want all those songs to come together it's not just a hodgepodge of, oh let's put you know 12 right. 13 songs on an album yes you want it to have a flow yes does that just like make your heart explode when they, it you're like, bingo, does. they got it, they, it they, they got it. And sometimes I've done albums in the past, they didn't. Right. So right. it's nice that people are willing to listen. I, I don't, um, I didn't expect, I mean, in the early reviews and, and industry uh, hearing the album, I, I didn't, I wasn't prepared for people listening so intently. Um, I guess with everything that I've, that's gone on with my life the last 18 months, people mm -hmm. are really interested in what musically I had to say. Absolutely, so yes. I, I've been really proud to hear some of the comments that um, I just, you know, I just don't want to let anybody down yeah. with, the, with the music. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not let down with it. So no, it's a great project. It really is. And I've had sneak peeks along the way. <laughs> I get to hear stuff, you know, and that always yeah. just makes me so happy when I hear something that I know people are proud of, that sure. they want someone else to hear it before anybody's supposed to. You yeah. know it's going to be good. And that always so, makes you nervous because yeah. you're really putting yourself out there yeah. with that. But, you know, I will say this and, and close with this. I am a huge fan of country music. I am. I always will be. I always have been. And it's it's an honor for me to have a place Absolutely. in country yes. music. This 50 year of, of the uh, CMA Awards is coming up. Mm -hmm. And I'm honored to be able to say that I'm going to be on the red carpet. Yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to have a seat on the floor at this 50 year celebration and I am so extremely excited to have been a part of the fabric in the last 50 years. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a huge blessing. Yeah, it really is. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot. This is our last question, our last thing. Sure. You are standing on a corner and you're a street vendor. I yeah. want you to sell that new album to me. Tell me, what, what's the best thing about it? Wow. Well, the first thing I would say to you, you got any money? <laughs> you got some money? Let me tell you about this new music. You know, tell me a story about your life, and I'm going to tell you which song on here. Uh, there you go. I love is that. Is going to uh, to be your favorite. That's awesome. Ty, yeah. it's always so fun to talk to you. I love Same you. Here. You know that. Thank and you, and Bev, I love you too, and MDA, and awesome. all my friends out there, and you guys. You're making my life special like crazy every day. I love you guys. That's so. right. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Sure. All right. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs>